Here we'll do a simple example using Laplace transforms. <clears throat> We're studying an equation that we have seen several times throughout the semester. Uh, in these videos, I'm giving you different methods of solving the same equation so that you can compare where in a situation where you know the same solution. So we have our linear constant coefficient non-homogeneous first order ODE with an initial condition. We're going to solve it using Laplace transforms. Now, as we saw, the method consists of several parts. We first have to verify that this is, in fact, a constant coefficient ODE. Here we have R1 is just a constant multiplying the x term, so it is constant coefficient. Uh, the method will work. We now take the Laplace transform of the whole equation. So we take the Laplace transform of dx dt minus r1 times the Laplace transform of x equals a constant s times the Laplace transform of e to the r2 t. As we saw, when we take the Laplace transform of a derivative, uh, we can use integration by parts to reduce that to multiplication by s in the following way. We get minus x of 0 plus the Laplace variable s times the transformed solution x hat of s, which at this point is still unknown. So this is what becomes of the first derivative when we take the Laplace transform. Minus r1 times x hat of s. This is just how we write the Laplace transform of x of t. And finally, we take the Laplace transform of the right-hand side, and I've just written down a couple of things that will be useful that I looked up on a table. Uh, the Laplace transform of an exponential e to the alpha t will take the form 1 over the Laplace variable s minus alpha. Here we have alpha equals r2, and so we'll have capital S divided by little s minus r2. So now we solve for the unknown x hat of s. Uh, the initial condition, x of 0 equals 0, will mean that this term goes away. And collecting like terms, we have s minus r1 x hat of s equals capital S over s minus r2, or x hat is capital S times uh, s minus r1 times s minus r2. Now here, we in general will have to use uh, partial fractions to break this into simpler pieces. So we can write that. I'll pull out the factor of s, and I'll write it then a or s minus r1 plus b over s minus r2. If I multiply both sides of this equality, where we're uh, first taking the, the general form of the answer, this comes about from the partial fractions theorem, and now we have to find the coefficients a and b. Uh, multiplying through, we obtain on the left-hand side s, capital S, and on the right-hand side equals, again, capital S, times capital A, S minus R2, when we cross multiply, and capital B times S minus R1. So, collecting S terms, little s terms, we can cancel the big S, collecting little s terms, we find that a plus b is 0, or b equals negative a. And negative r2a minus r1b equals 1. So we have b equals minus a. That gives us negative r2 a plus r1 a equals 
1 or A equals 1 divided by R1 minus R2. B equals negative 1 over R1 minus R2. So, where does that leave us? Let's erase from here on down. That leaves us with x hat of s equals capital S times one over R one minus R two over S minus R one plus minus one over R one minus R two S minus R two. So that took a while, but now we're basically done and the solution will instantly follow using the inverse Laplace transform. Here we have a constant times 1 over s minus r1. If we now take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides, on the left we get x of t, on the right we get s times, here alpha equals r1, we get e to the r1t. Here alpha equals r2 minus e to the r2t, and they're both over the common factor r1 minus r2. This is a solution we've seen to this problem in many other forms. It uh, required some partial fractions in the middle, but everything besides the partial fractions was pretty straightforward. Take the Laplace transform, get an algebraic equation for the Laplace uh, the, the solution in the Laplace variable x hat of s, that's just algebra. Break that algebraic solution into simple pieces and then invert. Uh, so it's switching to a better space for solving these kinds of problems where differentiation reduces to multiplication. Now, I want to say one more word about the resonant case. What if r1 equaled r2? If r1 had equaled r2, we would have gotten, though it's no longer on the board, we would have gotten x hat of s is s over s minus r1 squared, where r1 equaled r2. They would have both shown up in the same place. You can go back in your notes and, and see that. And if we had gotten this solution for our solution in the Laplace variable, x hat of s, we could have then looked up a different uh, inverse transform on a table and said, here, here we have uh, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus alpha squared. It's t e to the alpha t. So we would have immediately been able to go. This would have been even easier than the problem that we did solve. The, the, we wouldn't have had to do partial fractions. We could have immediately said that x of t is s t e to the r1 t. And that solution uh, we have seen in various forms satisfies the, the resonant case where R1 equals R2. So just to illustrate that Laplace transforms take care of all the edge cases in undetermined coefficients. They do it automatically. They find the particular solution, the homogeneous solution. They automatically satisfy the initial condition, and you don't have to worry about uh, resonant forcings. So for those reasons, um, even though it's a bit more advanced, it's, uh, it's a pretty slick method.